pick one for you. Uh, our speaker is uh, Michael Taylor. Michael is a graduate uh, of the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, uh, majoring in biology and philosophy. Uh, Michael has been in the science industry for eight years, two of which were uh, spent working as a laboratory coordinator at UNC Chapel Hill. He has been working with Mittler Toledo for over three years as a lab sales specialist and has placed a heavy focus on ensuring regulatory compliance within the workplace. Having said this, please welcome uh, Mr. Taylor. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me all right? All right, so today we're going to talk about accurate weighing in the laboratory or in the workplace in general. This afternoon, we're going to go over a basic introduction of weighing and some history. We're going to go talk about some specifics of the actual weighing mechanics of balances and scales. And most importantly today, we're going to talk about the uncertainty of measurement and how to ensure compliance. In 1946, Dr. Erhard Mettler discovered the substitution principle. This went from two wave hands, the typical tri beam wave hand, to only one. In 1973, the PT-1200 came out, and it was the first balance that used an EMF wave cell, which stands for Electromagnetic Force to Compensation Wave Cell. This is a diagram of what an EMF wave cell looks like. Very simply put, when you place any sort of load on your weight pan, there is a separation that occurs from where the fulcrum of the, the weight cell is. And what happens is, is that electromagnetic force is used to reconnect that connection. So the more weight that you put on the balance, the more force is required to reconnect that connection. And that force is actually what's used to interpret the weight that's displayed on your balance. So, accurate and efficient weighing. Weighing is used in all different types of, and environments of the workplace, whether it's upscaling and production, quality assurance, R&D, etc. So, in order to ensure uh, guaranteed accuracy, we want to produce high-grade products in the workplace, save costs, and reduce expenses as well as reducing time when it comes to routine testing practices. And most importantly, you want to ensure regulatory compliance when it comes to any sort of auditor walking around your facility. The more compliance that you're in, the less product liability that you actually have. So, how can you ensure that your weighing systems are above the necessary requirements? some ways to uh, avoid some pain points. Let's say, for example, that you have an out-of-specification batch. A lot of times it's due to inaccurate weighing, which can be caused by using the wrong equipment or by weighing the wrong way. It's also important when you have an auditor walk by to ensure that your, all of your instrumentation that you're using to weigh is in compliance. This is not only ensuring that you're using the appropriate device for the particular application that you're trying to but also that you have the necessary documentation. And as an end user or a quality assurance manager, you need to ensure that you're doing appropriate routine testing on this instrumentation. A lot of people in my experience actually do too much testing, meaning that they're actually testing their instruments more than they need to. That is added time that is not necessary, which in turn increases the cost of that actual practice. So, good manufacturing practice. Say what you do, do what you say, and be able to prove it. This is the mantra of GMP. So how do you ensure that? This is an actual warning from the FDA involving risk management. It stated the calibration of instruments was not always conducted at suitable intervals. It, this 
discuss the impact assessment for that application, and the requirement was to identify all critical and non-critical GMP equipment. These two sections here involve risk management, which we'll be talking about a lot today. So, let's say that your device is actually calibrated. Is it appropriate for the application that you're trying to use that instrument for? So you have calibration reports from your service provider, but is the instrumentation in all aspects of your workplace actually adequate for the, the task that you're trying to accomplish? So here's an example. My SOP says I need to weigh one kilogram of this key ingredient. This scale right here has a capacity of 3,000 kilograms and a readability of one kg. If you're trying to actually weigh one kilogram on this scale, you have an uncertainty of measurement of at least plus or minus 80%. What you see on that terminal, whether it's a scale that has a high capacity or it's an analytical balance where you're weighing below, let's say, milligrams, just because you see a value that's stable on that instrument does not mean that that's the actual weight of the sample that you're measuring. And this is due to the uncertainty of measurement that is involved in any time that you weigh something in your laboratory. These are many misconceptions here that people have in the workplace when it involves weighing. Again, what you see is what you get. This is not correct. Every time that you put anything on an instrument that's weighing, there's going to be uncertainty of measurement involved in that, the weight itself. So just because you see that it says 1 kg, that doesn't mean that it's actually 1 kg of sample that you're weighing. Another misconception is that I test my scales every single day. And I'm, of course, going to be in compliance. Although that may be the case, sometimes it's not. Again, you may be testing too much or too often. So we're going to talk about the actual life cycle management of weighing instrumentation. This involves, as you see here, the evaluation and selection of your actual equipment for the particular task that you're trying to accomplish. The installation of that equipment and the necessary documentation involving compliance for that. The calibration by a service provider. And the routine operation or routine testing, which would be done by the end users in that facility. So GWP stands for Good Way Practice. It was established in 2007 by Mettler Toledo. It is a science-based approach to the life cycle management of weighing. So what you should be able to establish by using a good weighing practice is how do you calibrate your instrumentation? How do you establish the limits of usage of each piece of instrumentation that you're doing weighing? And what is the sound scientific rationale behind every step of this life cycle of the instruments that you see here? When it comes to new equipment evaluation, the most important things that you want to keep in mind here is what is the smallest and largest weights that you're trying to weigh on that particular instrument? What are your accuracy requirements, or another term, accuracy limitations on that particular device? Are you under ISO requirements? Is your facility under USP requirements? What are the quality standards that you're trying to meet on that particular device? And a big misconception here that a lot of people have is that just because the instrument is providing you the readability that you think that you want to achieve, let's say, for example, that you're trying to weigh one milligram, so you would assume that a three decimal place precision balance would provide the level of accuracy that you need, that is not indeed the case. So as an example here, which of these instruments can you weigh 200 grams with 